asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Now, Tom Tugendhat. Jesus Christ, Richie, you're not going to talk about Tom Tugendhat again. I hear you cry. I am. He's an MP. He became an MP in 2015. He's very inexperienced. He's very new. Loves Israel. Big fan of the Zionist occupied state of Palestine is Tom Tugendhat. Really is. He, of course, chairs the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee. Extraordinary how he came to get that job. I did write about that. It's on richieallen.co.uk. He's been on television every single day and radio since the alleged poisoning of Sergei Skripal and his daughter, Yulia. Right? He's not been off telly. I've proven this. We've played clips of him every day. Sky News here, BBC there, BBC Radio here. Tom Tugendhat. I've concluded that Tom Tugendhat is an extremely arrogant and detestable man. He's a former army officer, I suppose. That's par for the course. Now, he was interviewed again by Rachel Burden of BBC Radio 5 Live this morning. Again, she spoke with him last week. We dissected that interview. Burden first says this morning to Tom Tugendhat that the people of Salisbury feel very let down. They haven't been kept informed and they feel, the people of Salisbury, that maybe their own safety has been compromised. These are legitimate concerns. What did Tom Tugendhat say to that? Well, I, I'm I'm sorry they feel that way, and and uh, and I understand why they do. But I'm afraid this investigation has got to be very very difficult. I mean, the idea that somebody would use a chemical weapon uh, in Salisbury is so extraordinary. It's hardly surprising that um, nobody could, you know, nobody was expecting it. And it's hardly surprising it took a couple of days, first of all, to find out what had happened and then to identify it. So it's, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I do appreciate their position because it's, it must be awful to suddenly realise that you, you may have been exposed to a chemical agent, but it's, I'm afraid the finger for that blame part points squarely at the Kremlin and not uh, at Westminster. Yeah, sod off, Salisbury Public. It's not our fault we didn't tell you anything or that your cars and your gardens might be, I don't know, might have traces of this nerve agent. Blame the Kremlin. I was thinking today, dear listener, the blame the Kremlin list is so big now, it's actually bigger than the Bible. It's massive. Bigger than the Bible. Massive list of stuff that the Kremlin is responsible for. It's everybody's get out of jail free card. Did you not put the cat out last night before you went to bed? Uh was the Kremlin. He's an arrogant man. No doubt about that. So back to Rachel Burden then. Rachel had this to say next. Well, you say squarely at the Kremlin. Um, they, or Theresa May has said, this is either a direct attack or that Russia somehow lost control of this catastrophically damaging nerve agent. So it could be one or the other. Well, I, either way, it's the Kremlin because, I mean, either the Kremlin has failed to keep control of a very serious um, weapon, or it's ordered it to be used. I mean, I, either way, I mean, you, you, you would quite rightly blame the Prime Minister if um, we had lost control of even a few pistols from our armoury, let, uh, let alone a chemical weapon. Mm. Don't blame it on the sunshine, don't blame it on the moonlight, don't blame it on the good times, uh, blame it on the Kremlin, uh, blame it on the Kremlin, it's the Kremlin, it's the Kremlin. Hmm... Mm. But there is a lack mm. of evidence here, and that's something that's been picked. Good stuff, Rachel. Lack of evidence. Top on by Not Dr. Really, Sergey. No. Well, let's hear from Dr. Sergey Markov, former MP for Vladimir Putin's United Russia Party. You'd expect him to have a particular standpoint on it, but here it is. Here's what he's had to say about the British response to this whole incident. I think it's uh, part of the aggressive uh, hybrid attack against Russia, but most important that politically w weak Prime Minister Theresa May is manipulated by uh, politically uh, strong uh, British intelligence service uh, community. Theresa May partly lost control of the British intelligence service uh, community. 
So that's what he says. He also says this is all propaganda hysteria and there's no actual evidence to link any of this to the Kremlin. Right. Now, Burden is right, is Rachel Burden. There's no evidence, none, to prove who was behind it. And she was right to play the clip of Sergei Markov, MP, former colleague of Vladimir Putin. Right? Burden did right there. This is fairly basic journalism. Remind him there's no evidence. By the way, Mr. Tugentat, have a listen to Sergei Markov. This is what he says. He's a former politician. All good. Back to Tugentat. Here's Tugentat. I'm sorry, look, that's, that's completely laughable. Um, in the United Kingdom, MI6 is not only controlled by a separate ministry, it's, uh, it's, it's overseen by a parliamentary committee, the Intelligence and Security Committee. It's governed by the rule of law and it's, it's completely controlled by parliamentary decree. Uh, in Russia, the KGB runs the state. Um, you know, we're, de- we're dealing with quite a different c- circumstance. And this is uh, Russian uh, chemical weapons. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt at all. And they've used it to attack and kill a Russian dissident. I mean, are we honestly telling uh, anyone that there's anybody else who wanted this Russian uh, ex-spy uh, murdered or attempted to kill? I mean, come on, this is, this is laughable. This is laughable. Now pay very close attention to what he says next to Rachel Borden. And the the very fact that um, he has the uh, chutzpah to repeat such such bold um, lies, frankly, is extraordinary. And frankly, I'm I'm slightly disappointed you're repeating them because this isn't fair and balanced journalism. This is simply repeating propaganda. I'm slightly disappointed that you've repeated them. This isn't fair and balanced journalism. This is propaganda. He says to Rachel Borden, the presenter, I've produced and presented shows for most of my professional life. I've told you that before. If Tom Tugendhat had said that to me on national radio this morning, I would have destroyed him. Not in an unprofessional manner. I wouldn't have lost my cool, but I would have gone for him. I'd have made him sorry that he'd ever said that to me on national radio. And this is a serious lesson to any would-be broadcaster. Never allow a guest to criticise genuine journalism or genuine balance. Up to this point, Burden, who I've hammered before, along with her colleague Nikki Campbell, but up to this point she's done her job. She's again questioned the legitimacy of the evidence and she's provided balance by playing the clip of Sergei Markov. She should have said to Tugendhat, excuse me, stop right there. Explain to me how this isn't fair and balanced. The Russians surely have right of reply Or do we go about believing everything we are told by the likes of you, Tom, without questioning it? Before Tugendhat had a chance to respond to that, Burden should have said, don't dare question my integrity, ever. Who the hell are you to question my integrity? I'm doing my job. Now answer the question. The Russians say there's no evidence. Show me some real evidence, Tom. Please show me some real evidence to prove them wrong. Stop telling me, Tom, that it's a fact, it's a fact, it's a fact. Show me the evidence. And then I will agree and I will acknowledge that the argument is with you, Tom. Where's the evidence? I'd have destroyed Tugendhat. But Rachel Borden collapses. Here's what she says. This is tragic. Well, I don't know. I mean, I am still genuinely confused as to whether it would be possible, for example, to develop this nerve agent outside the knowledge no, of the Kremlin and the Russian state. No, 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 no. Well, Sorry, nobody except a very, very serious laboratory can develop nerve agents. Hammer him, Rachel, hammer him, hammer him, stop him in his tracks and say, stop with the it's a fact bullshit. Stop it. Where is the evidence? Are you seriously telling me, Tugentat, that there is no other laboratory in the world able to produce uh, this sort of nerve agent but the Russians? Again, where's the proof, Tom? Where's the proof, Tom? The Russian government, the Russian foreign ministry, former Russian MPs, Russians living in the UK, and, well, pretty much every other Russian except those that don't like Putin are saying... It isn't us. We didn't do it. Why would we do it? But she doesn't stop Tom. And Tom continues. Nerve agents. It's an incredibly difficult chemical process to do. And were you even to try it, you're much more likely to kill yourself than you are to keep it stable. 
So the idea that any non-state actor, any at all, by the way, no non-state actor has developed chemical weapons of this kind, none, nowhere in the world. The only countries that have done it are states. And so the idea that this is anything other than the state actor is just completely fictional. I mean, it's, it's a total lie. And so it's what you've got to do is then work out which state may have done it. And that's what the people at Porton Down and the government have been doing. Okay. Is trying to work out the chemical signature. Okay. And the chemical signature point... She just can't get in there. She's allowing Tugendhat to basically take ownership of the airwaves and uh, to deliver a withering monologue, long on hyperbole, but short on any evidence whatsoever. This is what it's come to today, journalism. Signature points squarely at Russia. Right, clearly that is your position. And if that is the case, then no, it's how not my does... position, it's fact. I'm right. sorry, this, okay. is not, this is not opinion. OK, if that is... A... Yeah, sadly, Tugendhat is on the phone because I'm going to reverse my earlier statement about being professional. If Tugendhat was in the studio with me behaving like that, I'd knock him fucking out. It's not opinion, it's fact. It is in fact... It is, in fact, the police still haven't a clue. One day he was poisoned in the cemetery. Another day he was poisoned in the supermarket. Today they're saying he might have been poisoned in his home. Make your fucking minds up. Where was he poisoned? Was he even poisoned at all? This is horrendous. And this is the national broadcaster. A Zionist shill. Sitting at home. Lying. Spewing out, vomiting out bullshit with no evidence to support it and she wilts and collapses in the face of it instead of doing her job which is to represent you and me and say no 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 you don't come on here shouting the odds tug and hat whoever the fuck you are you come on this channel and make allegations about people you bring some evidence pal you bring some serious evidence you bring some irrefutable evidence Evidence that will stand up to any scrutiny and then you can carry on with your diatribes and monologues. Until then, don't come on here questioning my journalism. Don't come on here calling me a purveyor of propaganda because I played an audio clip of a former Russian MP. And she didn't. And she didn't. And there will be people listening to this who will say she'd have lost her job, Richie. I don't know if she'd have lost her job. I think if she'd gone after him, sons the bad language, of course, mea culpa, forgive the bad language, I can't help it sometimes, leave the bad language out. It's one thing to use bad language in a monologue like this, I would never use bad language if I was interviewing Tugendhat, but I'd have nailed him to the wall. And I don't think she'd have lost her job for doing that. How dare you come on here? How dare you? You're not an MP two days and you've got the foreign... Um, committee a chair job at the House of Commons. How did you get that, Tom? Articles you've been writing about Israel, the glorious, wonderful, democratic state of Israel, eh? Sickening that. Utterly sickening. To hear a journalist, a trained journalist, properly trained. I don't know if she went to Salford University. I went there. I don't know. Properly trained who understands what you have to do in that situation. How robustly you must slap down that conduct by that cretin Tom Tugendhat and annihilate him and send him on his way professionally and courteously send him on his way. Come back here, mate, when you've got irrefutable evidence. Do not interrupt me when I'm asking you to provide evidence. Do not interrupt me when I'm saying this is your opinion by shouting at me that it's fact. It ain't fact. It ain't fact because you've brought no evidence. Tom, where's the evidence, Tom? You Zionist whore, where is the evidence? You disgrace the democracy. Unbelievable. And anybody who's ever had the, the privilege that I've had to broadcast for seriously professional and successful commercial organisations and who's worked with serious people... It is devastating to hear that today on the national airwaves. It is seriously devastating. It's almost, it's almost tearful, to be honest, to hear that. To hear that woman just sit there and not absolutely destroy him. I could name a half a dozen presenters I've worked with or presenters I've known over the years that would have ripped him a new one. 
they would have sent him on his way, doing him up like a kipper in a way that he would never be put forward again by the Conservative Party. Fucking warmonger. Murderer. That's what it is. 23 minutes past the hour. This is the Richie Allen Show, live on richieallen.co.uk. And then we have Tim Farron, this, um, this clown, this religious nutcase, former leader of the Lib Dems. I wrote about this, well, I didn't write about Farron, but I wrote about the possibility the World Cup won't be in Russia. It's on the website, richieallen.co.uk. Farron went on Sky News and he was asked, well, do you think that the English team should boycott the World Cup because of these terrible Russians? I fear that we should, and I say that as a an absolute football obsessive. I have figurine Panini albums going all the way back to 1978, uh, which, interesting, was, of course, a year we did not qualify. Um, and so I don't say this lightly, I say it with a very, very heavy heart. We need to remember that whilst politics and uh, sport very often shouldn't mix and don't need to mix, Putin will make sure that it does this particular summer. Uh, what does Vladimir Putin value more than anything else? It's his prestige, his pride. If the United Kingdom, in this case England, the only home team to have qualified, uh, turn up at the Russian World Cup, my fear is that we will be seen to have basically rolled over and said, well, we may be angry with you. It's an appalling attack on not just two innocent individuals, but our very sovereignty as a country, uh, that we are prepared to just roll over and allow you to have your moment in the sun. I would prefer FIFA to withdraw the World Cup uh, from Russia, uh, and I would also prefer then there to be some alternative competition this summer. But it's not the case. I really fear with a very heavy heart that England uh, should not appear. Yeah, England shouldn't appear, says Tim Farron. They shouldn't go to the World Cup. Ah. <sighs> There was a virtue signalling world record attempt there by Tim Farron, by the way. I don't know if you noticed that. I have the sticker albums and I must be a genuine fan. I have the Panini albums and I must be a genuine fan because I know that England didn't qualify for the 1978 World Cup in Argentina. What an arsehole. Just in case we didn't get the message, Farron doubled down on it. What I would say is, first of all, I'd want FIFA to withdraw the World Cup uh, from um, from Russia. I think that is deserved. Secondly, I think you would say uh, if that isn't possible or if FIFA won't do that, and they're not exactly, you know, top of the list of ethical decision makers, so I'm not entirely holding my breath on that one. But nevertheless, let's say they don't do that. Then I would say our EU and our NATO allies ought to join us in this boycott. If they don't, then it's down to just us. And much as I hate to say it, my sense is that us not being there almost begins to feel inevitable now. We can't sanction what Putin himself is behind. But my point is, if there are 32 teams of the World Cup, England pull out, the Russians will just shrug their shoulders and say, well, fair play, off you go, see you later. The other countries are in. And that might be so. I think the, as I say, the, the, the way to look at it is what happens if we do go? And what we, what looks like being the case if we do go is that we've just rolled over, that we don't think that it's attack on our sovereignty uh, and indeed on peace on our streets is that important. So I hate to say it, you know, I'm not just some politician who talks about football when it's, you know, politically interested. I'm an absolute obsessive. It breaks my heart to even contemplate us not being there this summer. But my fear is if we go, it looks like we've basically just given up, rolled over, and allowed Putin to have his way. Yeah. Let's, and you know, I wrote about this today. It's a, In my opinion, it's a very strong possibility England will host the World Cup this summer. I have no doubt. And I wrote this this morning. And since I wrote it, it's on richieallen.co.uk. There are, we've seen more and more people, establishment figures come out and say, yeah, there should be a boycott. Russia shouldn't be allowed to have the World Cup. It's an act of war. What Russia did violated the UK's sovereignty. It's an act of war. What about the sovereignty of people in Yemen? What about their sovereignty? What about their rights to stay inside their own bodies and not be blown into 750,000 pieces scattered all over the road by a UK bomb out of a UK plane given to the Saudis? What about their sovereignty? What about their sovereignty? Let's boycott the World Cup. And Ofcom today, Ofcom is an abbreviation, Ofcom Official Communications Act. It is the, it is the regulatory authority over broadcasters 
in the UK. Ofcom wrote to Russia today and said that if the UK government finds that Russia was indeed responsible for attacking Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia, well, Ofcom might just have to take away RT's licence to broadcast, effectively banning it in the UK. And we heard John McDonnell, Numpty, Shadow Chancellor on Sunday with Andrew Marr, played the clip on Sunday View with John McDonnell. We had Yvette Cooper, Orange on a Toothpick herself, Caroline Flint, Chris Leslie MP, all the socialists, well, the Blairites really, saying that we got to get rid of RT, Chris Bryant, get rid of RT, get rid of RT. Do you have any idea what the definition of fascism is when elected officials de facto authority can demand the closing of a media organisation because they don't like what it says. Fascism. Writ large. This is fascism. I said today, look, you're never going to hear Putin criticised on RT, but we know that. We know that. When has anybody ever been allowed onto the BBC to criticise the Queen? When? 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 When, one time in history, did anybody get to go on the BBC to talk about the House of Windsor and their pals, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers? Never. Never happened. So don't say RT is a load of bollocks because it doesn't criticise Putin. We don't get it here. When has anybody been allowed to criticise the royal family? Eh? I can't believe I'm living through this, to be honest. I really can't. I remember the day, I remember the days when I broadcast for WLRFM, when I was producing a great presenter, rest in peace, when I presented in his absence, and when government figures were on my programmes, I was told, go for them, say anything you want, go for them, go for him, Richie, get him, fucking tear him apart, Richie. If RT is banned, it's, it's because, I'll tell you why, because this cabal, this cabal, Wants war everywhere. Wants it in Syria. Wants it in Libya. Wants it in Iran. It wants it everywhere. Wants it in the Far East. Wants it with China. So you've got to eliminate dissent. RT is really the only major channel that's putting forward people who are saying that which the establishment doesn't want said talking about the lies behind Syria, the lies about Libya. RT is doing that. So we better ban that. We better ban that. We'll blame the Russian poisoning. I'm pretty sure whoever was behind the attack on Sergei Skripal, it wasn't the fucking sports editor at RT or the features writer. Huh? This is fucking planet dystopia, this. Right here. You know? The Richie Allen show is not that important. We've got a lot of listeners, but they ban our YouTube channel for nothing. They do it to a lot of other people as well, by the way. Speakers are being banned, kicked out of places for no reason. We know this. It's happened to David Icke, of course. Gilad Atzman, many more. Fascists dressed up as fucking socialists, calling themselves Antifa, battering people because they don't like what they're saying. Free speech is not under threat, folks. It's diminishing front of our eyes. I'm told reliably that this year Ofcom is going to start going after the independent operators. Your presenter. Can't have that, Richie. You can't broadcast nightly from your home without having a licence from us. And forget the £300 or whatever it is I'll have to pay them. But by getting a licence, at any time they want, they can force me to shut down because they can allege, as Google did, that something I or a guest said, in fact, constituted harm. So you're gone. Fuck off. No more Richie Allen show. Gone. And I'm not that important. I'm not important at all. It's the information. But that's what they can do. Ofcom. Like that. Gone. You're done. You're finished. And of course they have they have the power of the law because they can send the law around to your uh, place of work to effectively confiscate your equipment. We told you not to broadcast anymore. You continue to do it. We'll have your gear, please. I've got a studio here that's worthy of the BBC. Paid for by my listeners. State-of-the-art equipment. 
paid for by you. And this year they're going to announce that non-linear schedule content creators, meaning people who don't have an online radio station, but just present on their own, we're going to be fair game. What are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it?